So where is Albania? People always ask me. If you think of the boot of Italy kicking backwards, the heel would hit Albania. Uh, kind of right in the middle of Europe, you have this communist country that for 50 years was totally isolated from the rest of the world. In 1967, the dictator said, we are the first atheistic nation in the world. People really had no clue as to who God, they weren't allowed to talk about God, people went to prison, all churches, mosques, any kind of religious institution uh, that existed in Albania was closed down in the 60s. And so a whole generation grew up not knowing anything about God. So when I first came in 1992, as the country was just opening, uh, people were asking me, stepping in the street, can you give me a Bible? Who's Jesus? What are you talking about? And uh, we saw an amazing transformation in the culture in the early 90s. We started doing summer camps, and then uh, a Bible school has been running now for about 10 years. The community life here at the school is very unique. There's usually half Albanian students and half foreign students. You get to know people from the church, you walk through town, you can greet people, people greeting you back. You get to know like the waiter from your favorite ice cream place, you know a few people from the shops where you go to a couple of times. We have a different adventures where we're doing canyoning or hiking up to the Greek border. We walked or hiked through the gorge, we climbed Gramozi, the mountain was next door to us. We have students often go out to Philippi or Thessaloniki to see the ruins of the early church there. Well, during Bible school, we were, had the opportunity to experience different teachers from different parts of the world. We were able to dive into the Word and just kind of challenge each other in different ways. I think this whole experience has um, taught me how to read my Bible more and put the things that I'm learning into practice. Our students are coming and living as a part of our local community in a cross-cultural situation and they're experiencing not just a Bible school isolated in a certain place, but they're living in the context of missions. We as Bible school students were really involved in the church. We went of course to Sundays to the church service and on Wednesdays to the normal regular Bible studies. I was um, part of the high school ministry here in town, so I would hang out with high school students every Friday night. The students go into different countries, so we'll have a team going to Kosovo, one goes into Macedonia, we had a team going to Bosnia and into Greece, and working with local churches that we partner with in, that, in these areas. It was um, amazing to do things together and to serve God together. Even uh, we were from different countries and different uh, personalities. Basically the, the whole message about Bible school is how much I depend on Jesus, that there's just things I, I can't do by myself and I depend on Him. And the outreaches, I think, showed me this in a very like, practical way. Before Bible school, I didn't really know how God was going to use me. I just kind of uh, went into it thinking that you know, I was going to grow, but I didn't know my purpose in life. Being able to be a youth pastor for a short period of time with the youth here, I was able to really see the passion come out. And when I go home, I actually have a better relationship with the youth, and I really um, see how He's going to use that eventually in my life. I feel like God has called me uh, to live in a community that's really intentional and I'm thankful that He called me to this place to learn those things about how to be intentional and how to meet someone on the street and invite them in for a meal and run into someone in Tirana and then they show up in Arseca a couple weeks later and we feed them and house them and teach them about God. There's this um, verse in the Bible where Paul talks about because we are under grace we don't want to sin anymore, and it's not the law that encourages us not to sin, but His grace. And I think I never really understood why this is the case, but through a personal experience I had here, um, I kind of learned that, that it's true because I am under His amazing grace. I just don't want to live my old life, but I want to have this new life, and I, I don't want to be under the control of sin anymore, but be free from that and, and follow Him and also obey Him because He shows me grace.